Hi, it's Robert Mitchell at the Inlight Human Rights Documentary Film Festival here in Bloomington, Indiana, and I'm here with uh, the filmmaker, Catherine Fairfax Wright, who was a co-director on the film Call Me Kuchu, and I was wondering, uh, I guess an opening question would be, what is a Kuchu? Sure. Well, uh, Kuchu is a term that was sort of coined by the LGBT community in Uganda. Um, it's sort of a catch-all term. Um by which they identify themselves. So it's it's means LGBT um, or, you know, however you identify yourself within the sort of queer spectrum. Um, that's just the, the term that they've been using. So they've, they've it's one that they've, um, you know, rather than using the terms that have like been placed upon them by others, they decided to come up with one that they would, um, that they would use. You, be, you had worked on this documentary for quite a while. Um, what brought you to Uganda in that particular issue in Uganda? Well, Malika and I, I made the film with Malika Zuhali Worrell. Um, we had both been hearing, um, well, I guess it started initially with um, Malika hearing about um, this transgender man, Victor Mukasa, who had um, uh, a police raid had occurred in his house. And um, I think... He just he didn't feel that it was done properly. It was uh, you know his some of his property was destroyed and they were did it pretty violently. And um, he decided to take the attorney general to court in the high courts in Uganda um, for invasion of his constitutional right to privacy. So uh, he ended up winning his his court case, which was this landmark victory in 2009. Um, you know, landmark especially because it was occurring in a place where sodomy laws were on the books, where there was a lot of discrimination against the LGBT community. Um, and then, apart from that, we had heard that there was uh, this uh, anti-homosexuality bill that they were considering tabling in Parliament. So we were kind of interested how um, all three of those things, um, you know, the sodomy laws, the, this great court victory and this potential horrific bill could um, could all be occurring in the same place. So it seemed like there was um, a lot of contrasting dynamics at play and uh, an LGBT community that was becoming increasingly organized. Um, and, you know, that's what we were interested in documenting more so than just the plight of, a, of an LGBT community. Um, you know, we, we didn't want to just further this narr uh, narrative of victimization. We wanted to be able to capture them fighting back. So we just decided to book tickets and see what was going on. Watching the documentary, uh, it was riveted by David Cato, who unfortunately is no longer with us. I wanted to know if you could speak to, because he seemed like such a vibrant, amazing human being that would give anything to anybody. And I was wondering if you could speak to what it was like to meet, how did you meet him and what he was like as a human being? exactly how he was and, and why we decided to to focus on him because he was such a captivating person he would certainly give you the shirt off his back um but uh you know moreover was also just so intelligent so um so dynamic he was so interested in in the lgbt uh equality movement on every level he was interested on on the legal level and the you know, macro level dealing with, um, how, you know, how to deal with partner countries and this kind of thing, but also very much on the grassroots, you know, the first one there, um, when someone was sent to prison unlawfully and all that kind of stuff. Um, but we met him initially, uh, Human Rights Watch put us in touch with him because at that time, which was late 2009, he was uh, sort of one of the most boldly out um, LGBT uh, people. So by default, he was sort of the media liaison for uh, foreign journalists wanting to come interview people and stuff. So he um, just kind of gave us the go-ahead to uh, come. We had He was sort of our only appointment before we went. Um, we met up with him on our first day in Kampala in a local pizzeria, which was what, like one of their only sort of meeting places where they felt comfortable because it was owned by an expat who was, um, you know, kind of okay with who they were. So we met up with him there, and he just... He just went from like zero to 60, just right off the bat, was very welcoming of us, was, uh, you know, just rattling off names and numbers and uh, really got us fully embedded quite quickly um, with the LGBT community. So, uh, you know, he, he's as much sort of a creator of the film as we were in that sense. I was wondering what the current situation in Uganda is in regards to uh, these bills, because I read that they introduced another one and it uh, 
didn't make it anywhere, and I'm sure that that fear is always going to be there for a while. And I was wondering, uh, have you stayed in contact with uh, the people you've met, and mm -hmm. how are they doing? Uh, we do keep in, in contact with everyone. Um, a couple of people have uh, left the country. Naomi is now living in Sweden. Uh, Long Jones is actually here in the U.S. He's living in Boston. Stosh is also in the U.S. Um, you know, but there has been, a, to some extent, a... Uh, sort of changing of the guards in terms of um, the who makes up the infrastructure of the LGBT movement. Um, but Kasha is still there. Um, Frank Mugisha has become one of the you know biggest activists. He's very, very active all over the world and also very much still in Kampala. Um, and in terms of the bill, so you see it sort of shot down at the end of our film, um, which was great. And then... Um, V Bahati, the creator of the bill, vows to bring it back, which in fact he does. He retables it. Um, and then it was actually passed, so it did become law. Um, but then, of course, the LGBT community fought back against it and brought it to the constitutional court. Um, and then the court actually struck it down, which was fantastic, except they didn't strike it, strike it down because the law itself was unconstitutional. They didn't really get to that point in it because um, they deemed that it hadn't been given proper quorum. So it was sort of like, um, it, w it was struck down because of the way it was passed into law, essentially. So then, of course, it was, uh, you know, Bahati again promised to bring it back, and he has. So now it's back. It's just been sort of ping-ponging back and forth. It's not, it's not on the law books yet, but it's um, still lingering in uh, Parliament. When I watched the film, one thing that uh, I was very curious about, and perhaps you could speak upon it, was the American evangelicals that show up in the film, and they're preaching all this hate and whatnot in this foreign country. What do they have to gain by doing such uh, an atrocious act? Yeah, well, that's what's complicated about it. Um, in some ways, someone like Giles, who um, is the managing editor of the newspaper, who's... Um, quite anti-gay in, in some ways that's easier to, to strike down for me because I just his isn't quite as religiously based and it's just based on his like uh, um, silly hatred of people you know based on total misinformation and stuff so I almost feel like that's easier to turn around what's problematic about the pastors is it's that it's based on their reading of the bible it's I would consider it a total misreading of the bible but nevertheless it's how they have chosen to read it. So that's a little bit more complicated um, to turn around, I think. Um, but uh, one reason why some people say that these American, specifically American evangelicals, have gone over there is because they feel like they've sort of lost the battle here. I mean, we have 30-something states now that, that um, recognize gay marriage. Um, you know, you have a population that is becoming increasingly accepting of it. And so they've um, sort of gone abroad to, to nip it in the bud there uh, before it gets out of hand the way it has here. Um, and then I think there's various reasons why, you know, Uganda specifically, perhaps because it's an English-speaking country, it's one that has a fairly um, well-functioning infrastructure so you can kind of disseminate your message a bit more easily than you might in a place like Congo or something. Um, you have the family, which is that secretive, weird uh, Senate group, you know, uh, group comprised of s politicians and, and other s similar people. Um, David Bahati, the author of the bill, being one of them. So, uh, and then also a lot of American influencers. And so, you have some some I think action going on al along that line. Um, so I think there's various reasons why, but um, you know, the unfortunate uh, outcome is that it has spread this vitriol against the LGBT community. Uh, really throughout the populace.